Hare Krishna. So Krishna, in the previous verse, he spoke about uh, what happens when a person is not connected to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now let's discuss about uh, what happens to the same person, not connected to Krishna, not controlling his senses. What happens to such a person? So let's see shloka number 67. Indriyanam hi charatam yanmano no vidhiyate tad asya harati pragnyam vayur navam ivam bhasi. So here, very nicely, you know, it is said, Indriyanam hi charatam. So one of the senses, so we have ten senses in our body, five knowledge acquiring senses and five working senses. So, knowledge acquiring senses we have studied right from childhood, that is eyes, nose, ears, tongue and touch. And uh, working senses are uh, speech, hands, legs, genitals and rectum. Mm -hmm. So, any one of these senses, they are enough for what? These moving senses or these roaming senses are enough for yan mano no vidhiyate, yan mano Yan manaha anu no vidhiyate. Anu vidhiyate. So what is that? So these one of the roaming senses are enough to drag the mind away from the ultimate goal. And here it is given tad asya harati pragyam. So when the mind is taken away, the intelligence which is focused on one particular aspect that gets deviated. And what is the comparison that is given? Krishna gives amazing analogies. Here, there is another analogy. It says, Vayur navam ivam bhasi. Vayur means wind. Vayuhu. Navam, that is boat. So like a strong wind sweeps a boat on a, on a water body. So a boat might be going in some direction. It wants to go in some direction. But a strong wind comes and just sweeps it away you know, from that particular path. In a similar way, one of the roaming senses will sweep away the mind and the intelligence. Mm -hmm. A very simple example. I was thinking, you know, what can be an example to understand this? Now, just imagine, you know, you're sitting uh, in your home and <clears throat> a car just in front of your house you now is moving with a loud music. And that particular song which is played in the car was your favorite song in your childhood. And all the time you are hearing that in your childhood. So you are sitting and then you are doing some work and then uh, you, know, you are hearing that sound. The sound enters your ears and you are working, you are busy working. And then when you are working, you start singing. Ah. <laughs> and not just singing. What happens along with singing? The mind goes to some 10-15 years back to the childhood and starts remembering all that had happened. Just imagine, we just heard, we just heard it, that's it. And we went back. Or, you know, we are seeing some poster and some similar incident, or you know, some movie poster and some similar incident had happened in our life previously, maybe some five, six years back. So as soon as we see that, what happens? The eyes are roaming, because the eyes are not fixed on Krishna. No, eyes are roaming, they're looking at various things. So when the, when the sense is fixed on one point, the mind also gets fixed on that and the mind will take us back to that situation. So, where is the question of intelligence being fixed on Krishna? So, as soon as the mind takes the person behind, the intelligence will also go with the mind. So, in this way we see that these senses are very, very dangerous. So, if these senses are not controlled, they will keep roaming here and there and they will keep deviating us from the ultimate goal of life, that is to break the cycle of birth and death. So this is a very, very important point. But then, what is the solution? We have to engage all these senses in service of Krishna. That's what Prabhupada is saying here. Unless all the senses are engaged, see, not just one, all the senses are engaged, because even if one sense is not engaged, what will happen? Same. So what is that? Vayur navam ivambasi. Like the boat is sweeped by the strong wind, our consciousness will get sweeped by one of the roaming senses. So unless all the senses are engaged in the service of the Lord, 
even one of them engaged in sense gratification can deviate the devotee from the path of transcendental advancement. So one sense is enough. That is the reason. What was Amrish Maharaj doing? Amrish Maharaj, he engaged all his body parts, all his body parts in service of Krishna. So this is what we need to do. We have to engage our self, our entire existence, our entire body in service of Krishna. Now someone might ask this question, why should I engage? If we don't engage, all these things will happen. But another logic you know, that we can give here is, this body does not belong to us. This body is like a flat and we are staying on rent in this body. And who, who is the owner of this uh, uh, house? The owner of the house, the owner of this flat is Lord Sri Krishna. He is the proprietor. He is the proprietor of everything. So this body belongs to Krishna. So, but obvious, this body should be used in service of Krishna. And when we use this body in service of Krishna, automatically, what will happen? Our senses will remain controlled. All these problems are arising only because of one thing, because we are not connected to Krishna. And what do we mean by connected to Krishna? Being connected to Krishna means always engaged in service of Krishna. That is what is meant by being connected to Krishna. Now, there might be a question, that, uh, you know, Prabhuji, we have so much of work to do in our day to life. We have office, we have family, the school, and the kids have their school, and so many other things are there. And sometimes the atithis will also come, <laughs> the relatives will also come. So how, how can we be always engaged? Only one answer. Whatever we are doing, whatever activities we are doing, our tongue should keep moving, the, our tongue should keep vibrating. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Our tongue should keep vibrating this Mahamantra. Doesn't matter we are focusing on the Mahamantra or not, our tongue should keep vibrating the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And with time, automatically, even the mind will start getting focused on the Mahamantra. By the way, this needs practice. It will not happen just like that. I, I'll give you a simple task. Okay, so let's do this task. So tomorrow morning, when you're taking bath or when you're uh, you know, attending uh, you know, various activities in the washroom, so right from the time you enter the washroom till the point you leave the washroom, so see, nothing else is there to do in the washroom. You know, you're just doing the daily activities. So just keep chanting the holy names. Continuously, you enter the washroom, and you start chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So whatever activities you are doing, just keep chanting the holy names. And you will see, after a few minutes, we will forget to chant the holy names. <laughs> we will start thinking something else. Our mind will take us to some you know, different fantasy world altogether. Why this happens? Because that's what we have been doing throughout our life till now. Automatically the mind will be engaged in that. So chanting of the holy names continuously needs a practice. And obviously it needs the mercy of Krishna as well. So we have to pray to Krishna as well. So what, what, can, we, what can we do to avoid the situation that is mentioned in this particular shloka? All the time we can keep chanting. First. Second, we have to keep Krishna in the center of our life. And Krishna should be served. That is very, very important. So that is the reason it is recommended. That in every house, there should be a big temple and you know, there should be a big photo or you know, vigraha of Krishna. And all the family members should serve you know, Krishna with a very nice devotional and service mode. So these are some practical tips you know, that we can uh, implement in our day-to-day -day life. And this will help us to engage all our senses in service of Krishna. Hmm. In fact, next shloka we will discuss more on the practical tips because next shloka talks about sadhana and sadhaka and we all are sadhakas so we should know what do what do we mean by sadhana what sadhana should we do and what is the goal of sadhana so again a very important shloka in fact you might be thinking this person says every shloka is important yes every shloka is important because it's firstly spoken by krishna and secondly every shloka is meant for us so that we transform our life we mold our life to remain happy, to remain blissful all the time. And finally, attain Krishna this very lifetime. Thank you very much. So let's see Sadhana and Sadhaka in the next video. Don't forget to attempt the quiz and don't forget to put your understanding in the comment section. 
This will surely enhance your understanding and also the ones who are going to read your comments that will surely help them. Thank you.